Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. Chapter 1 Down the Rabbit Hole Alice felt too sleepy to play, and there was nobody to play with. It was a hot afternoon, so she was sitting in the garden under a tree. Her sister was sitting beside her, but she was reading a book. Alice looked at the book. There were no pictures in the book, and Alice didn't like books without pictures. <sighs> I think I'll go and pick some flowers she said to herself. She began to get up, but she forgot about the flowers at once because she saw a rabbit. She often saw rabbits in the garden, but this rabbit was different. He had large pink ears like most rabbits, but unlike most rabbits, he was wearing a blue coat and had a watch in his hand. He was looking at his watch and saying, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late! Oh, what an unusual rabbit, said Alice to herself, and she jumped up and ran across the field after him. The white rabbit hurried on. He was still looking at his watch. I'll catch him at the fence, thought Alice. But when the rabbit came to the fence, he suddenly went down a rabbit hole. Alice followed him. She was inside a dark hole and she was falling. Either the hole was very deep or she was falling very slowly. She saw lots of things on her way down. There were cupboards on the sides of the hole and maps and pictures. She fell and fell such a long way. She began to think she was going to fall all the way to Australia. But after a very long time, her fall suddenly came to an end. Alice found herself sitting on a heap of dry leaves, and she wasn't hurt at all. She stood up quickly. She could see the white rabbit in the distance. He was still hurrying and looking at his watch. I mustn't lose him now, thought Alice. She ran after him. As he turned a corner, she heard him say, Oh dear, oh dear, I'm so late. Alice was close behind him, but when she turned the corner, the white rabbit was not there anymore. Alice looked around. She was in a long, dark, empty hall, but some lamps on the ceiling gave it light. There were doors all around the hall. Did the rabbit go out of one of the doors? She walked right around and tried to open each door, but she couldn't. There weren't any keys. It isn't a very good idea to run down rabbit holes after rabbits, she decided. Suddenly, she noticed a small table in the middle of the hall. There was nothing on it except a small gold key. She picked up the key and ran to one of the doors. But the key was too small to open the door. Alice was trying all the doors for a second time when she saw a low curtain. Behind the curtain, she found a door about 15 inches high. It's strange I didn't notice this one before, she thought as she turned the key. The door opened, but Alice had to go down on her knees to see what was on the other side. The little door led to a beautiful garden. Alice wanted very much to go into that beautiful garden, but she was too big. She wandered sadly back to the table. Then, as she put the key back, she noticed a bottle on the table. That's funny. This bottle wasn't here before, she said in surprise. She picked it up. There was a piece of paper on the bottle. Alice read these words, Drink me. So she did, 
and the drink tasted so nice that she drank it all. Oh, what's happening? cried Alice. I do feel strange. She was getting smaller and smaller. Soon, she was only ten inches tall. Now I can get into the garden, she cried. But then she remembered the key. It was on top of the table, and of course, she couldn't reach it now because she was much too small. I'll never get out of this hall, thought Alice sadly. I can't climb up that table leg. Then she noticed a very small cake on the floor beside her. She picked it up and read the words, Eat me, on top of the cake. Will it make me bigger or smaller? Alice wondered. I'm not a very useful size now, so I suppose it doesn't really matter, she decided. She put the cake in her mouth. Ow! cried Alice as her head hit the ceiling of the hall. She was suddenly nine feet tall. She quickly picked up the little gold key and went to the door to the garden. Now she was so tall that she could only see the garden if she lay down and looked through the door with one eye. Oh, what can I do now? said Alice. I'll never get into that garden. She sat down and began to cry. Her tears were so big that they soon made a small lake which covered half the hall. Alice stopped crying when she heard footsteps in the distance. She looked up and dried her eyes as the white rabbit came into the hall. He was carrying white gloves in one hand and a pink fan in the other. He was still talking to himself, but Alice needed help badly, so she began, uh, Excuse me, sir. The sound of Alice's voice took the rabbit by surprise. He dropped his gloves and fan and turned and ran away. Chapter 2 The Lake of Tears It was so hot in the hall that Alice picked up the pink fan and began fanning herself. Oh dear, she said to herself. I'm all alone again. How will I find my way home? And she started to cry once more. But as she fanned herself, she became smaller and smaller. And as she cried, the lake of tears got bigger and bigger. Soon, the lake around Alice was so deep that she had to stop crying and start swimming. After a few minutes, she heard splashes. She wasn't alone in the lake. Everywhere she looked, she saw more and more animals. They were swimming too. Alice wanted to get out of the water. She swam to the edge of the lake, and the animals followed her. The crowd of wet animals stood on the bank and looked at Alice. She looked back at them. All the animals and Alice were wet and uncomfortable. They began to talk to each other. How are we going to get dry? asked Alice. I know the best way to get dry, said the dodo. The dodo was a very large bird. What's that? asked Alice. A race, replied the dodo. What sort of race? asked Alice. Please explain it to us. The best way to explain the race is to do it, said the dodo. You must all stand in a circle. Alice and all the animals stood in a circle. Now, said the dodo, you must all run about. They all ran about for half an hour until the dodo suddenly called, Stop! 
The race is over! Who has won? Shouted all the animals. The dodo thought for a few minutes. Then he said, Everyone has won. Everyone must have a prize, and she must give the prizes. He pointed at Alice. Alice didn't know what to do. But when she put her hand in her pocket, she found some biscuits. She gave one biscuit to each animal. She had just the right number of biscuits. That's good, she thought. But she must have a prize herself, said the mouse. Alice felt in her pocket again. All she had was a thimble. This is your prize, said the dodo. Alice felt rather silly and wanted to laugh, but she didn't dare. None of the animals were laughing. Then all the animals sat down and ate their biscuits. Then their mothers arrived to take them home. It was time to go to bed. Alice said goodbye to the animals, and suddenly she was all alone again. Alice felt very sad without all the animals. She was beginning to cry again when she heard footsteps. Alice looked up and saw the white rabbit. He was hurrying along as usual, and he was looking for something. Suddenly, he saw Alice and shouted at her angrily. Why, Mary Ann, what are you doing here? Run home at once and bring me my gloves. It was a mistake, of course. Alice wasn't Mary Ann at all. But the white rabbit looked so angry, and Alice was afraid. She ran off at once. She came to a woods, and there among the trees was a little house. This must be the white rabbit's house, thought Alice. She was going to go into the house, but just then someone came out of the woods and ran up to the front door. She watched him from behind a tree. At first, she thought he was a man. He was wearing a hat and a blue and gold jacket. He looked like a man, except for his face. When she looked at his face, she saw that he wasn't a man at all. He was a fish. When a frog in a pink and gold jacket opened the door, Alice wasn't surprised at all. She was becoming used to funny things. The frog stood on the doorstep and took a large white envelope from the fish. It is from the Queen, said the fish. The Queen invites the Duchess to tea this afternoon. The fish ran back into the woods, but the frog just sat down on the doorstep. Alice felt braver now, and she walked up to the house. There was an awful noise inside. Alice was curious. She wanted to go inside the Duchess's house and see what was happening. May I go in, please? Alice asked the frog. I shall sit here for days and days, replied the frog. That's not an answer to my question, said Alice. She pushed the door open and went in. <laughs> What an awful noise, said Alice. She put her hands over her ears. An ugly fat lady sat in the middle of the room. She was holding a baby, which was crying very loudly. Another woman was standing by the fire. No one was taking any notice of the noise. That woman with the baby must be the Duchess, thought Alice. And the other person must be a cook. The cook was watching a pot, which was full of soup. Alice sneezed. The air was full of smoke and pepper. A very large cat sat beside the fire. He had a big smile on his face, which was very strange indeed. Cats don't usually smile.
Chapter Three: The Cheshire Cat and a Mad Tea Party. Why is your cat smiling? Asked Alice. It's a Cheshire Cat, said the Duchess, and that's why. I've heard stop grinning like a Cheshire Cat, thought Alice to herself, but I didn't think there really was such a thing as a Cheshire Cat. Suddenly, the cook began to throw every object she could reach at the Duchess. She threw cups, plates, and pots. Although some of the things hit her, the Duchess took no notice. Then the cook turned back to the soup, and the Duchess began to sing a song. It was difficult to hear the words because the baby was crying so loudly. But what Alice could hear was very silly. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. After a few minutes, the Duchess stopped singing and threw the baby to Alice. Catch! She shouted. You may hold the baby if you like. I have to go and get ready to see the Queen. She hurried out of the room. Alice didn't dare stay in the kitchen with the cook. She didn't want the cook to start throwing things at her, so she took the baby outside. I'll have to take the baby home with me, thought Alice. If I leave it here, the cook and the Duchess will kill it. It was difficult to hold the baby because it was such a funny shape. It moved about all the time too, and it was making very strange noises. Oh dear! Thought Alice. What's the matter with it? She looked at it carefully for the first time. Its face was changing. Its eyes were getting smaller, and its ears were getting bigger. Why? Cried Alice, I think you look more like a pig than a baby. Perhaps you really are a pig. What shall I do with the pig when I get home? The baby began to move about so wildly that Alice couldn't hold it any more. So she put it on the ground, and it ran off into the woods. Alice was rather glad. Then, to her surprise. She noticed the Cheshire Cat again. He was now sitting on a branch of a tree, only a few yards away. He was still smiling. Cheshire Puss, she began, can you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends on where you want to get to, said the cat. It doesn't matter, really, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go," said the cat. "But I must arrive somewhere," added Alice. "Oh, you'll certainly do that," said the cat, "if you walk long enough." This was plainly true, but it didn't really help. Alice tried another question. "What sort of people live around here?" she asked. The cat pointed to the right. If you go that way, he said, you'll come to the Hatter's house. If you go the other way, you'll meet the March Hare. Visit them if you like. They're both mad. Oh, I don't want to meet mad people," said Alice. "You can't help that," said the cat. "We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad." How do you know I'm mad? Asked Alice. You must be mad, said the cat. Only mad people come here. Are you going to tea with the queen? He added. She hasn't invited me, said Alice sadly. You'll see me there, said the cat. As he spoke, he disappeared. Alice did not go much further before she came to the March Hare's house. She was sure it was his house because it looked like a hair. It had two tall chimneys which were the same shape as a hare's ears. 
The roof was made of fur. Oh dear, thought Alice when she looked at the house. I hope the March Hare isn't too mad. There was a long table under a tree in front of the house. The March Hare and the Hatter, Alice knew it was the Hatter because he was wearing a hat, were sitting at one corner of the table. They were having a tea party. A dormouse sat between them, but he was fast asleep. When the March Hare and the Hatter saw Alice, who was coming toward them, they shouted, "There's no room at the table, no room!" "Don't be silly, there's plenty of room," said Alice. She sat down in a large chair at one end of the table. "What day of the month is it?" asked the Hatter. Alice thought for a moment. "The fourth." The Hatter looked at his large pocket watch and said, "Two days wrong. I knew it wasn't right to put butter in the works." He looked angrily at the March Hare. "But it was the best butter," replied the March Hare. He took the watch from the Hatter and looked at it sadly. Then, to Alice's surprise, he put it in his cup of tea. He looked at it again. Alice broke the silence. What a funny watch! She said, "It tells the day of the month, but it doesn't tell what time it is." Why should it? Asked the Hatter. It's always five o'clock. Alice had an idea. Is that why there are so many tea things on the table? She asked. Yes, said the Hatter. It's always tea time, so we never have a chance to wash the cups and plates. <sighs> the, the dormouse must, must tell us a story. story. Wake, Wake up, dormouse! cried the other two together. The Hatter poured a little hot tea on his nose, and the dormouse slowly opened his eyes. Tell us a story, said the match hare. And be quick, added the Hatter, or you'll fall asleep again. Once upon a time, there were three sisters," began the dormouse, "and they lived at the bottom of a well. The sisters were learning to draw. The dormouse went on in a slow, sleepy voice. They drew everything that begins with M.、Um... Why M?" asked Alice. But the dormouse was asleep again, and although the March Hare and the Hatter hit him quite hard, he wouldn't wake up. Alice decided to leave. When she turned back for a last look at the house, the Hatter and the March Hare were trying to put the dormouse into the teapot. Chapter Four. In the Queen's Garden, the path led Alice into a woods. Alice noticed that there was a door in one of the trees. She pushed it, and it opened. Alice walked inside. The door in the tree led into a beautiful garden full of bright flowers. Near the door, there was a large rose tree. The roses on the tree were white. But three gardeners were busily painting them red. How very curious! Thought Alice. She went nearer in order to watch them. The gardeners didn't look like real gardeners. In fact, they didn't look much like men at all. They looked like playing cards, except that they had proper heads, arms, and legs. The gardeners seemed to be angry. They were shouting at each other. But when they saw Alice, they dropped their brushes in surprise. Why are you painting those roses? Asked Alice. Well, Miss, began one of the gardeners. This rose tree ought to be a red rose tree. But we planted a white one by mistake. If the Queen sees the white roses, she'll cut off our heads. So we're painting them quickly before. 
Before he could finish what he was saying, one of the other gardeners shouted, The queen! The queen! And the three gardeners threw themselves down on the ground. Alice looked around. She wanted to see the queen. First came ten soldiers. Ten courtiers in very fine clothes followed them. Just like the gardeners, they were the shape of playing cards. Next came the people who were going to have tea with the queen. Alice couldn't see the duchess, but she did see the white rabbit. She thought she saw the cat too, but he quickly disappeared. Then came the knave of hearts. He was carrying the king's crown on a red cushion. At last, Alice saw the king and queen of hearts. They looked just like the pictures on the pack of cards Alice had at home. Alice didn't know what to do, so she stood and waited. When the king and queen came opposite her, they stopped and looked at her. Who is this? The queen asked the knave of hearts. He just smiled and looked silly. What's your name, child? shouted the queen. My name is Alice, your majesty, said Alice very politely. She told herself, I mustn't be afraid, they're only playing cards. And who are these? said the queen. She pointed at the gardeners. They were still lying on the ground face down. How should I know? said Alice. It's no business of mine. The queen couldn't believe her ears. Off with her head! she shouted. She was so angry that she turned bright red. No! said Alice very loudly and very bravely. She's only a child, said the king quietly. The queen was silent, but only for a moment. When she noticed the roses, she became very angry again. Off with their heads! she shouted. She was pointing at the three gardeners. They ran behind Alice, and before anyone noticed, she quickly picked them up and put them in a large flower pot. The soldiers wandered about the garden, but they couldn't find the gardeners anywhere. Are their heads off? shouted the queen. Their heads are gone, your majesty, replied the soldiers, which was quite true. The soldiers didn't dare say they couldn't find the gardeners. The queen looked at Alice again and asked, Have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, said Alice. She didn't know what a mock turtle was. She knew that mock turtle soup was called mock turtle because it wasn't really made of turtles, but only tasted like it. Could I really see a mock turtle? she wondered. The griffin will take you, said the queen. Then she and all the other people went off to tea. Alice looked around the garden. She seemed to be alone again and didn't know what to expect next. She didn't know what a griffin was, so how could she find him and ask him to take her to see the mock turtle? She wandered a little along the path. Then she noticed something and stopped. An animal was asleep in the sun near the path. He woke up and looked at Alice. So, the queen wants you to meet the mock turtle, doesn't she? He said to Alice. He rubbed his eyes. Come on, he said. I'll take you. Alice walked along with the griffin and looked at him out of the corner of her eye. She didn't want to seem curious, but she didn't have a chance to see a griffin every day. The top half of his body was like a bird, but the bottom half was like a lion. They walked in silence until they saw the mock turtle in the distance. He was sitting on the beach on the edge of a rock. Come on, said the griffin again, and Alice walked a little faster. She could see the mock turtle better now. 
He was almost like a turtle, but he had a head and a tail like a calf. The mock turtle saw them. This lady wants to know your history, said the griffin. At once, the mock turtle looked very sad. Alice felt sorry for him. I'll tell you, if I must, said the mock turtle. Sit down and don't speak until I have finished. Alice and the griffin sat down, but for a few minutes, nobody spoke. He'll never finish if he doesn't start, thought Alice to herself. They all sat in silence. Then at last, the mock turtle started to speak. Once, he said, I was a real turtle. A very long silence followed. Then Alice saw that the mock turtle was crying. He was probably crying because he was only a mock turtle now, not a real turtle. Alice was going to get up and say, Thank you for your interesting story, just to be polite. But she wasn't quite sure whether that was the end of the story or not. She waited a bit longer. Suddenly, the mock turtle began to speak again. When we were little, he said, we went to school in the sea. Our teacher was an old turtle. We called him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise? asked Alice. You said he was a turtle, not a tortoise. We call him Tortoise because he taught us, said the Mock Turtle angrily. You really aren't very clever if you don't understand that. Why do you ask such simple questions? asked the Gryphon. They both looked at poor Alice. She felt very silly. At last, the griffin said to the mock turtle, Get on with it. We haven't got all day. The mock turtle told Alice about his school. Alice listened carefully, but everything he said was rather strange. The subjects he studied weren't quite the same as the things Alice learned at school. She didn't really understand the words he used, but she was afraid to ask questions. She didn't want the mock turtle to start crying again. Instead, she asked politely, How many hours a day did you have lessons? Ten hours the first day, answered the mock turtle. Nine hours the next day. Eight hours the next day. How curious, said Alice. That's why they're called lessons, explained the griffin. There are less of them each day. Alice thought about this new idea. What happened on the eleventh day? She asked. It was a holiday, of course, said the Mock Turtle. And the twelfth day? Asked Alice. She liked the idea of fewer lessons every day and wanted to know more about it. But the Gryphon and the Mock Turtle thought it was all so simple that they didn't need to explain it anymore. That's enough about lessons said the griffin. Let's talk about games now. You haven't lived under the sea, have you? said the mock turtle to Alice. I haven't, said Alice. And you haven't ever met a lobster. Alice was going to say, no, but I've eaten one. But she stopped herself and simply said, no. So you don't know what a lobster quadrille is? No, I don't think so, said Alice. Is it a sort of dance? We'll show you, said the Mock Turtle. He began to sing a song very slowly and very sadly while he and the griffin danced around Alice. This is what he sang. Will you walk a little faster, said a whiting to a snail. There's a porpoise close behind us, and he's treading on my tail. 
See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They're waiting on the shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, will you join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? Thank you, said Alice when they sat down again. That was a most interesting dance. I'll sing another song if you like, said the Mock Turtle. Singer Turtle Soup! said the griffin, before Alice could answer. Yes, please do, said Alice weakly. She hoped the song wasn't very long. The mock turtle began with tears in his eyes. Beautiful Sue, beautiful Sue, Of the evening, beautiful, beautiful Sue. He was about to go on when they heard a cry in the distance. The trial's beginning. Come on, said the Griffin, and he took Alice's hand. What trial is it? Asked Alice, but the Griffin only answered. Come on, and ran faster. In the distance, Alice could still hear the mock turtle's sad song. Soup of the evening, beautiful, beautiful soup. Chapter 5 The Trial When Alice and the Griffin arrived at the court, the King and Queen of Hearts were already there. There was a great crowd of all sorts of animals and birds, too. Alice saw the White Rabbit. He was standing beside the King. He was holding a trumpet and a piece of paper and looked very important. The king was the judge. Alice knew he was the judge because he was wearing a wig. He was wearing his crown on top of his wig. Alice thought he looked rather silly. The knave of hearts was standing on the other side of the court. He was the prisoner and the soldiers were guarding him. Next to him sat twelve animals in a box. They were the jury. They were all busily riding. Why are they riding? Alice asked the Griffin. The trial hasn't begun. They're writing down their names so they won't forget them, the Griffin told her. In the middle of the court, there was a large plate of jam tarts. Alice began to feel rather hungry. I hope the trial will be over soon, thought Alice. Then we can eat the food. Suddenly, the rabbit blew on his trumpet. There was silence in the court. Read out what the prisoner has done, said the king. The rabbit looked at his piece of paper and read, The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Did he do it? The king asked the jury. Not yet, not yet, said the rabbit. We must ask a lot of questions first. Alice sat down and listened. The white rabbit had a list, and he read out people's names. Then the king asked them questions. One of the people was the duchess's cook. The king thought for a long time. Then he asked the cook, What are tarts made of? Pepper, mostly, answered the cook. No jam, 
shouted somebody else in the court. Throw that person out of the court, shouted the queen. Off with his head! There was an awful lot of noise for a while. Then the white rabbit went on with his list. All the questions and answers seemed very silly to Alice. Then the white rabbit called out the next name. Alice! Here! cried Alice and jumped up. Alice was sitting by the jury box. As she jumped up, she pushed the box by mistake and it fell over. All the animals fell out of the box. The trial can't go on without the jury, said the king. Alice picked them all up as quickly as she could and put them back in the box. But she was hurrying so much that some went in upside down. What do you know about this business? The king asked Alice. Nothing, said Alice. That's very important, said the king to the jury. You mean unimportant, said the white rabbit very politely. Yes, of course, said the king. The animals of the jury wrote it down, but nobody asked Alice any more questions. The trial began to bore her. Then the queen said the silliest thing of all. We must now decide what the punishment is to be. But did the knave steal the tarts? said the king. The jury must decide first. No, said the queen. Punishment first, then the jury can decide if he did it. Alice couldn't keep quiet any longer. She was so angry that she quite forgot to be polite. She jumped up and shouted, That's silly! You can't have the punishment first! Everyone in the court looked at her. Off with her head! shouted the angry queen. I'm not afraid of you, said Alice. You're only a pack of playing cards. As Alice spoke, all the playing cards rose together into the air and flew down onto her. She tried to beat them off. Alice found she was lying in the garden under the tree. Her sister was brushing some leaves off Alice's face. Wake up, Alice, said her sister. You've been asleep a long time. Oh, I've had such a curious dream, said Alice, and she told her sister all about it.